Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We'll put that down uh, to the Ecuador Insider Podcast. Jesse, Brandon, Carl. Uh, how's it going? We're here in Vilcabamba again, where we always are. I'm um, coming to you today. This is where we live, Jesse. This is where we live. It is. Um, I've lived blessed. here for a while. Carl, longer than me. Wow. I'm the newbie. You're the newbie. Feels good. It's though. good. We're glad you're here. <laughs> We're glad you're here. <laughs> um, so thanks for tuning in. We're going to give a political update today because uh, we got exciting stuff um, happening in politics, which I'm sure is making international news. So it, the only the only time Ecuador makes international news is for like overblown bad news. Like I've, no, I've noticed that for 10 years now. It's like, you know, people, the, anyway, so hyperbolic, hyperbolic, negative, bad stuff everywhere ecuador yeah i guess yeah. that's probably just true news in yeah. general everywhere mm -hmm. i'm just seeing it firsthand here but right. so we'll talk about that a little bit today uh july 21st nine day vilcabama lifestyle come retreat. on down come on down we'd love to see you here we've given the pitch many times don't have to do it again um but it is a magnificent way to spend nine days and you're going to learn everything you're going to immerse into the community you literally get it all so check it out uh link below Go click on that. You can read about the retreat, um, watch promo videos, we give got us a, new, a ring. Mm -hmm. We got a new promo video coming out next week, Carl? Probably tomorrow. Tomorrow, all right. So perhaps before this. Check <laughs> it out. It's pretty sweet. Carl did a good job on this one. No, it's, it, it is. It's, uh, we, he, he reined it back in from the, from the <laughs> way over the top. But he got, it was very like, it was good though. It was, yeah. it was good, started out good. It's great now. But anyways, uh, and it's very honest, completely accurate. So. Check that out. Um, we'd love to see you down here. So um, yeah, let's let's jump right into it. So um, let's just clarify a couple of things before we talk about this topic. We're not Ecuadorians, right? We're not from here. We don't have a lifetime of experience with Ecuadorian politics. Um, Brandon's a couple years in. I'm 10 years in. Carl's 11 or 12 years in. Um, so we have some experience, right? We do speak the language. We do uh, have well, two of us speak the language. <laughs> uh, we do have, uh, you know, we're, we're integrated in the culture here, right? I, we have Ecuadorian friends all over the country. I lived in Loja for many years, um, totally immersed in, in, you know, there's very few foreigners in Loja. Um, so we have, we have some knowledge, right? But we're not taught, we're not experts. We're not, uh, you know, we're not uh, university professors in, in, in Ecuador giving their opinion. But we do want to give you our thoughts on, you know, on what's going on here politically and take take that as you will but that's uh that's part of what we're going to cover today so i mean would you say that we're just as qualified as like rachel maddow and sean hannity and tucker carlson i mean we're probably to talk way about way politics? more qualified I than mean, at least a couple of those <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um careful man i'm going to reveal my politics if you keep talking um, Don so, Lemon. <laughs> right. so um so uh <laughs> What, you don't like Don Lemon? I love him. Okay. Nice. Right. Good. <laughs> um, wasn't he fired recently? I think he was. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Along Tucker he... Carlson, right? Yeah. Tucker, yeah. It must be. Yeah. The word, mu <laughs> the order must have gone out. <laughs> um, anyways. So, right. So what happened here recently, and I guess we should give a little background. So um, Correa, who took power here in 2008, if I remember correctly, um, changed the constitution there was a constitutional referendum or however they do that they have a brand new constitution i don't know if that was in 2010 or if that was in 2008 again i'm not a I'm not a history buff here on this but we had a new constitution um correa was in power for 10 years so he was uh two years unelected and then two terms elected of four terms each 10 years we had massive improvements to the country during that time and then over the last couple of years, two to four years really of his presidency, he got wildly unpopular um, with some of the more outrageous tax proposals, regulatory proposals, etc. Um, sort of left office, extremely unpopular, was replaced by um, someone from his party, Lenin Moreno, who everyone hates and did a terrible job, according to everybody for those four years. I thought he was way better than I expected, so uh, he was there for four years but also from the political ideology, to some degree anyway, of Correa, which is the political left here in Ecuador. Um, and then, uh, and then we, since then we now have Guillermo Lasso, who's a, who's a businessman, banker. Uh, I forget if he was the president of the central bank or not, but he was, he was head of, I think it was Banco de Guayaquil, was it, I think? Uh -huh. Banco de Guayaquil, he ran that for a number of years. He's 
you know that that's who he is so he's run for president a number of times a lot of people think he think he won the election in 2016 against moreno that's controversial um but he comes from the political right as they as they describe it here in ecuador so he took power now since then and there, look none of this are facts like this is this is what we've heard is our opinions um but a lot of people say here a lot of people say here that correa and his party was in bed with the cartels right that they were they were they took money from the cartels and as a result everything stayed quiet drug trade went on on the coast or wherever that happens you know basically un, unimpeded and since then apparently lasso is not right lasso has not done that and so there's there's a very interesting dynamic if you talk to people again i don't know if this is true or not but but if you talk to people they always explain this dynamic where the theory is that the cartels who want to move as they can without, you know, they want to move drugs or do whatever they do, uh, un unimpeded, are having a problem because Lasso is actually trying to stomp them out, um, which I think is awesome, but, you know, they're actually trying to stomp them out. And, um, and as a result, they're funding discontent, right? They're funding opposition, they're funding, they're, they're trying to cause security issues in the places they can, so on and so forth. So, so if you subscribe to that theory, that's kind of what Lasso's up against um, in terms of trying to get trying to get his agenda through. Um, and so what he's done now is he's used what they call the Cruz Muerte or something, the Death Cross, um, and he's dissolved Congress. So the assembly is now dissolved, and then there'll be elections. I think it's in six months. Is that right? Six months. There'll be elections in six months to elect a totally new Congress and a new president. In the meantime, he's in charge, right? So he doesn't have to run stuff through Congress now for six months, which is interesting, right? It gives him, it gives him free reign. If you, like his, if you like his agenda, it gives him sort of, to some degree, free reign to implement it now for six months. Um, and then he may be out of office at that point. Um, we'll see what those elections bring. But it gives him it gives him that that period of time without having to go through Congress, and then it brings in all this all this other stuff, right? So the indigenous, supposedly, we'll see what happens. But the indigenous groups, who are led by you know, there's all this weird stuff that goes on. Like a lot of people say that the heads of the indigenous groups are totally full of crap, and and that's why they lost support on the last time they tried to do this, and blah blah. blah. Like who knows? But but the indigenous groups are threatening a, a strike, like a paro where they kind of shut down the country because they don't like what's going on. That's happened a number of times since I've been here. Um, and, and we'll see what happens. But it's definitely going to be an interesting time in po politics here. I've learned over the years to ignore it completely, all of it, um, here, because it's just way different than what I was used to, coming from the States, obviously. The politics here take on such a different form. Um, and they always seem to work themselves out. So... Uh, I've, I've been sort of wrong a lot over the years about what I thought was going to happen. I then started asking people who I trust. They seem to always be right. <laughs> so, so I kind of just stopped paying attention and trust, you know, trust them. But we'll see what happens. Definitely an interesting time. Um, at the end of the day, like, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think it affects us really uh, at the end of the day. Like, these are just kind of the gyrations of Latin American politics. And Latin American politics are they're nuts like they're different they're totally different uh, i think there's a pearl of wisdom there in in what you said in regard to not paying attention to politics i've done that more since we've come since my family and i have moved to ecuador and not caring as much about u.s politics has, has been like a blessing in disguise it's yes things matter but at the end of the day how much impact does it have really on our day-to-day -day lives these decisions are making a, a lot of its rhetoric a lot of it is not even policy change some of it is and there's some big things happening of course that we should stand up for especially if it's something you really believe in but at the end of the day from like a stress perspective and and what you can and can't control right who gives a rip about politics in yeah. the united mm -hmm. states you know like it it yeah, I don't know. So I think it's just that applies anywhere in the world. Like politics are po it's political. It's it's theater. It's 
acting for ugly people. I mean, I don't know what right. is it, it's, you know? It's, it's like, literally mm -hmm. the word. It's multiple right. ticks right. sucking your blood. Right. <laughs> uh, ticks, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, and just, I know you want to jump in here, Carl. Just, um, I think it's a great point. And um, you know, something I wanted to say about that overall here is that I've just come to trust over the years the Ecuadorian people, mm -hmm. right? So as I've watched a lot of weird stuff go on in this country. There was a lot of scary moments for me politically, especially at the beginning um, where I was really concerned about the direction of the country and this and that. And what I've just seen over and over again is that no matter how weird it gets in its various gyrations, the people fix it at the end of the day. So, and there is real power here in that. I've watched that happen over and over. So I like, I really trust in that, um, regardless of who wins elections or who does this or who does that. If there's something that's out of sorts enough, the people will stop it and they'll fix it and they'll make sure that the country's how they want. Yeah. That's effing awesome. Yeah, like, there's peace know. of mind for that. There's yeah. peace of mind, real tangible peace of mind with mm -hmm. that. Right. Yeah, just to put a little nuance to your, you know, your explanation. Uh, basically, uh, the reason why Lasso dissolved the Congress or the Assemblea is because a lot of the people in the Congress were, they basically put a lawsuit on him for an investigation about some embezzlement case, which he says is fraudulent and fake and whatnot. Um, so they were trying to basically impeach him yep. through, through proving that he had, uh, was involved in some embezzlement before he was even a president. It's an investigation about something that took place in 2018, is from what I understand, and so that that was the decision he took is to just dissolve the whole thing, right. which is very unique. Uh, they say you were mentioning the constitution. Oh. There was a new constitution put in place. This there's an article in there that allows a president to do this. I guess it was added probably by Rafael Correa. Yeah, that was, was yeah. And uh, it's the first time it's ever been used by an Ecuadorian president, but it's 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 valid and it's uh, it's working. Everyone's uh, well. The people around him, I guess, are supporting it. The court yeah. had to approve it. They approved it. Yeah, and even the military, like, announced... This stuff is so funny. Like, this place... Latin American politics are hilarious. But the military leader, you know, the general or whatever who's in charge, announced and said, like, we will support, you know, the the constitutionality of this move by Lasso. And, and right, right. you know, you never know with these things. Yeah, like, right. you know... You know. <laughs> and the, like, the reason for this really is because in the past... When the military didn't approve, then there was actually a revolution. They would yeah. kick out presidents. Oh, yeah. Now, if the military yeah, yeah, yeah. No, if the, shows their allegiance yeah. to the president, it means there's probably not right. going to be a coup. But the it. fact that it's in question all the time, for me, is just hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. Like, yeah, right. you just never, like, you never, these things are so. It's, I mean, Ecuador's kicked out, what is it, almost 20 different presidents or something <laughs> yeah, like this? Yeah. I don't history? know the number, like, but yeah, yeah. They, yeah. I mean, just since, just since 90, like, six or eight, there was like seven or something. Right, right. <laughs> Before Correa took over. That's when Correa came in is there was a revolution a coup yeah 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 he, he, he got his first two years through uh through it's that. it's conceptually just similar to the states it's like this is the ecuadorian version of like hillary's emails or <laughs> trump's right. confidential information or obama's yeah. birth certificate i don't know it's, a, it's well, stuff like that and we have a military industrial complex in the united oh, states that sure. has tons of power so it's very similar it's just it's just We're more country, on display it's on display it's <laughs> less organized it's comical it's less sophisticated and it's the size of Colorado. <laughs> you know? It's way better. Like yeah. on that stuff that for me, great. it's way yeah. better. Yeah. Like you yeah. can see the fraud, you can see the corruption here. Whereas back home, oh my gosh, right. it goes on 50 levels right. above your head mm -hmm. or more. Yeah, I mean, just to drive that point home too, like this stuff is just par for the course here, right? Like, like every president, like half the presidents, it's probably more than half, I have no idea what the number is, but Many Ecuadorian presidents end up in jail or or fleeing the country after they're president. Like this is normal. This is totally normal. It's like, like Illinois like, governors, my state. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right. So I mean, like Correa can't come to Ecuador, right? Because right. there's an arrest warrant out for him. Um, his vice president, I don't know if he's still in jail or he got let out, but he was in jail for a number of years. Um, this is like political retribution through mm. the justice system in that way exists. So yeah, I mean, who knows? I don't know. If, you know, I'm sure Glasgow's is guilty of all kinds of stuff. I have no idea. <laughs> you know, I have no idea if this lawsuit is, is is legitimate or not. But but those putting political pressure in those ways is completely normal um, in this country. So, yeah. All right. I think we covered that um, as well. So yeah. Um, let's see. We don't have another topic. Where do we, where do we want to take this? Um, How about the weather? We had some big shifts in weather recently. You could share that. 
Let's yeah. talk about the weather. Let's talk about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> so how about those Mets? Uh, <laughs> right. um, Mets are good, dude. Pete Alonso. Yeah. <laughs> Big meat yeah. Pete, baby. Yeah, they've had a good couple of days. Pete's a monster. He's going to lead the no, league in homers, man. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a monster. We do have some clouds behind us, though. The polar bear or something? The polar bear. The polar yeah. bear. Yeah. Yeah. But it's basically the beginning of the dry season. What they call summer <laughs> here. Good, good segue. <laughs> <laughs> polar bears like snow. We don't have snow in right. this region of Ecuador. <laughs> Is it all dried up? <laughs> <laughs> Was that the melting ice cap? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes? Well, yes. <laughs> Even though we, we do have a cloudy day today, we got yeah. a little bit of rain last night. Yeah, good. Yeah. It was like the first uh, time in, in a, while. a couple weeks, it seems. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, May usually starts drying out a bit. We get a little more wind picking up. There's beautiful blue skies, sunny days. Yeah. Mountains are starting to change color. You can kind of tell. Yeah. A little bit of brown. That that pink, yeah, uh, that pink, uh, red grass. Starts yeah, it popping goes up. to seed. The grass goes to seed right. and mm. turns this beautiful, like purplish, purplish, like red, flower reddish. Looking, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's nice. You can tell it's nice here. I mean, we don't have a winter and you know leaves fall like in Canada. I'm from with snow and etc. Um, but we do have a rainy season and a dry season, so it's good to see the changes in, in nature and the environment. Yeah. It's, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's, go ahead. it's been interesting too. Like. Um, since 2013, when I got here, the weather was on clock was like clockwork for mm. almost every year of that entire time. Outside of, I don't know if it was one year, if it was a year and a half, or it was, it was up to two years. It was definitely one year, like clearly, where it it rained all through dry season, which I had never seen. Normally in dry season, it's like dry as a bone essentially um, for a number of months. Normally here, dry season starts around now. I usually call it June, but right around you know spring and june um and then last until october november december depending on the year i would say november but that was um you know that was consistent for years and then mm -hmm. we and then it's changed a little bit it seems in the last 12 to 24 years, yeah. yeah 24 months or whatever mm -hmm. um but it, right now it seems very much back in what in what Pretty we're much, used yeah. to where mm -hmm. where a dry season is a rainy season ending there's a kind of a semi-definitive end to that um and you you do you get those not today, but if we had recorded any other day in the last week or two, it's like very bright and sunny most of the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. yeah, what I've heard is we went through La Nina in the last couple right. of years. That's why there was some changes. Now we're back to El Nino, which <laughs> I read is going to be really strong this year, whatever that means. So right. we'll see what happens. They're, what happens. But, they're always but, saying stuff like that, but I find a lot of times like I realize later, I'm like, oh, this must have been what they're talking about. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. But um, the last year, we didn't have like a proper dry season. It still rained during the dry season. The mountains never turned brown at all. You notice? The was mountains it last stayed, year or the year before? It was last year? I mean, year. this last year, yeah. The last dry season. Our, 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 our first retreat was in July. We yeah. told everyone in the retreat, oh, this right. is it the dry season. And We're it gonna rained. Have a really and it <laughs> rained almost every day. It rained a lot, yeah. yeah. It was surprising. Yeah. Not we literally, had a, just we literally had a little chat, yeah. chat with the retreat group the first day of the retreat. And we're like, well, this is a dry <laughs> season, right. you know. That, yeah. And then Ryan was like looking out the mountains. Yeah, it probably won't rain. It's probably going to be dry. And like probably 10 minutes later, it starts pouring. <laughs> pouring rain. Oh, that was great. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got a good laugh out of it. Yeah. No, yeah. And um, there's something I want to say about that, the retreat. Oh, yeah. When it when it rains here, like during rainy season, it's not it's not raining all the time at all, right? It's not. It's I, not I know, like raining all day. No, no I never. know there's some places in the in the world where rainy season means it's like raining for six right. months. Um, so I think some people get the wrong idea, but a lot of people prefer rainy season here, um, you know, because it's green and it's lush and it's beautiful. It never rains all day. Like there's pretty much no. I, in 10 years, there's maybe been, you know, two or three times in those 10 years, literally like days that it's rained all day. Um, I don't even know if it's ever happened. It's like usually it rains and then it yeah. stops and then it might start again. Like right. it's cloudy. Up, clouds up. Yeah. 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 But like so, actual pouring all day. I don't think no. usually, it usually comes like strong for like half an hour. Right. <sighs> right. And it comes yeah. strong, but it doesn't come like raining sheet bullets like it does in no. Costa Rica and some other no, places. Yeah. It's not no. like a monsoon. It doesn't, or, it doesn't yeah. come like that. Yeah. No, no it's interesting. I mean, we, you know, we get a lot of people here from obviously from different places. I've noticed Colorado, Texas, Bali, Hawaii, Costa mm -hmm. Rica um, mm -hmm. are definitely California, hot. California, California for sure. 
are definitely high on those lists. Of course, Canada as well is a lot, a lot of Canadian. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave that out. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. Like I hear people, you know, talk about. I've never been there, but you hear people talk a lot about Costa Rica, and uh, everyone seems to like it and hate it at the same time, <laughs> right? You people go there for various reasons. Obviously, it's a place that developed. Uh, 40 years ago at this yeah. point, something like that. They're probably 30 years ahead of us. 30 yeah. years, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and you know, apparently, I don't, I've never been there. Apparently, you know, property values are really high. It's really expensive. They have all kinds of bureauc bureaucratic issues, visa issues. Um, and apparently it's very normal there to get robbed, like for people to like steal from you. Um, right. I've had like a lot of people tell me this, that mm -hmm. it's just like part of the culture. Um, and that was like really house people in your house, like your housekeeper. <laughs> yeah. Like we literally just had lunch and they were telling us you and I were together and, and, and he was telling us how he lived there for two years and it just became expected that my housekeeper was going to rob from me. So if I didn't <laughs> want my money stolen, I needed to keep it on me or locked yeah. up because yeah. if I left it out, she was going to take it. Right. Yeah. Which we've heard multiple people in Costa Rica tell us a similar story like that. And to be fair, that can happen here too, right? It's not oh, like it, it can happen. happen. Again, well, sure, I mean, but you don't have world, that expectation. Right. Not at all. I don't have the expectation. No, no, no. I have somebody come no, in my right. house. I don't have no, the I expectation that I'm going to be robbed. That's, I, I, that's the key differentiator. Right, right. Well, and, that, and that was the point I wanted to make was just, it's amazing to me how different those things are, right? Like, cause you can be here for a while, like myself and Carl have, you have a little bit of a fresher perspective where you just get used to the way things are and you don't really have anything to compare it to anymore. Mm -hmm. And when I hear people who come from Colombia, Mexico, Costa Rica, other places, and I hear about how it is there, I'm like, wow, Ecuador's awesome. You know, <laughs> like, like, I'm, like, you know, there's, it's not, you know, again, anywhere in the world, you can get something stolen. Of course, we're not talking about that. But, but the, the, the expectation in this culture uh, at least in this region, right? It's not, it'll be a little different in some different places, but at least in this region, they take such pride in who they are, in their name, in their honor, in their reputation, their family, in, in their area, right, their, their family, all of it. Yeah. That like, you know, the the idea of that being a norm is was shocking to me, right? Yeah. It's like, it's so it's so opposite here. Um, which, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like, you know, it's, Ecuador is a place that has problems like anywhere in the world, right? But when I... When I think about, when I sort of compare here, whether we're talking about security or we're talking about anything we're talking about, um, I, gosh, it comes out very favorably for yeah, me every yeah. time. <laughs> you do your, your, your nerdy accountants like me, if you do your T accounts, you got the, lots of credits, man, lots of credits. Mm -hmm. Lots of credits for Ecuador. You're getting a lot of, lot, positives outweigh the negatives by far for, from my experience so far. Yeah. Yeah, and at the end of the day, for me, like it's the people. You know, it's the people that make it that way, which again goes back to a previous point, which again for me gives me confidence in the future, right? Yeah. It's like because it's the people that the community. hold yeah. it, yeah, that hold it together the way it needs to be. Yep. And it's not perfect, obviously, but but um, no. but it's great. Like, yeah, that's you know. like the 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 positives and negatives of of echo chambers, right? We've talked about that before, where. There's a little bit of an echo chamber here, but it echoes a lot of the positive stuff because the community is so important and the relationships and the reputations and the families and the family values, that gets reverberated throughout the community and it becomes ingrained and important and everybody understands it. So those types of things in an echo chamber magnify greatness, magnify good, magnify light. That's awesome, right? That, and it feel, and it's, you can feel it. You can feel whatever you wanna call yeah. it frequency energy vibe yep. flow whatever it is you know right like, <laughs> Carl, yeah, Carl, Carl. Carl's offended. Carl, no, I'm Carl. Offended. <laughs> I, um, I like to hear you say these things whatever right? it is right but it's, it sounds like it shouldn't be coming from him right now <laughs> he's a closet like totally brand's a closet hippie like completely right right, right. <laughs> But but it feel like you could feel like what would you call it? What what would you call it? Like no, you said it. Good yeah. vibes. It's uh, vibes. Yeah, yeah. The energy is on the, sounds good too. I, I mean, closer. Oh, yeah, the uh, the feel of the the town there. The vibes. Yeah. yeah, and people like what I love, right? I mean, I love what's happening here in the community. Um, we've talked about this a lot, but like the the quality of human <laughs> that oh, that keeps crazy. coming. Um, for a long period of time now like it's been a few years now where it's just like oh wow another cool person another cool person another awesome family another right that's that's been amazing and then 
getting to know new people, you know, getting to know these people, not all of them, of course, but the people you get to know, um, hearing from them how grateful they are, the sort of, the sort of relief almost that they're here and they found this place, right? right like, right, it's like, right. it's like people almost, you can feel it's like, oh, like, you know, they've been looking, you get people that they've, they've lived here, they've lived there, they tried the States, they went overseas, they went back to the States, they did this, they did that. Right. And then they and they and they're looking for things. Right. They're looking for great neighbors and great people and community. And a lot of people are looking for health and wellness and a great climate and all the things, you know, kind of that we're all looking for. Like basically a great life. Right. You want activities for your kids and you want clean water, clean, clean food. Water, right? clean, yeah. All that. Yeah. And then they they get here. Not everyone. Some people get here and don't like and go home. But like but like the people who like it here, you know, they they get here and they just they're they're just like this exists right, like right. like you guys are really doing this it's it's actually it's not like a brochure there's no literature it's it's right. real like it's yeah. taking place it's pretty cool and and there's so many families and they all they all have their own different unique stories on how they got here and why they're here etc um that's all unique and interesting but they all have this underlying very similar conclusion to to what you just said jesse and and a, actually we've got a lot of these interviews lined up in our expat series guys that we're going to start releasing these because there's so many new families that have kids that are similar age that you know they have great interesting stories on how they got here which is cool so you can kind of learn about some of the interesting people that are here but you can understand also you can see really clearly those those core values those underlying values that that we're all we're all looking for and that we all value they're here because of those and they feel it here and there's they have that sense of of relief or peace of mind yeah. now that they're here and they and they share it with us and we're going to share it with you guys please guys huge favor if you're enjoying this put a like on the video that helps us out a lot um subscribe to the channel hit the bell if you want the that gives you the notifications when new content comes out Ding. um I guess I should say share too. Do people still share? Is that still a thing? I don't know. But share as well. Send it to your friends. Send it to your friends, mm -hmm. right? Your parents. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> 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 All right. Do you wanna? You got anything no, else I you wanna? That, I think that's about it. All right. Cool. Well. This is also a great transition. Um, are we we're, done? We're, we're, done doing really well, we're doing really well with the segments. Let's just, yeah, let's just call All it. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Brandon's got a massage to get to. You know, one of the many benefits, right? Like, like seriously, yeah, like, like yeah. you're going to run out of here and run to a massage. It's $30 an hour. This lady is, Adrian is her name, if you want to. This lady is widely considered the best in town. There's a million masseuses in town. A lot of them are good, but... Um, but this lady's incredible, and uh, yeah, I mean, you're gonna go feel amazing after in an hour and a half. You do oh, usually yeah. an hour and a half. half today. I do two hours. I'm cooler than Brandon, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, these guys are gonna say something that they say. Good job. We hope to see you here one day. <laughs> and until then, see you next time. Ciao, guys. Yeah, I nailed it twice in a row. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs>